Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, today to the agenda, we mainly have to cover a few minor outages that happened over the weekend or over the past few days. Um, the first one that um, I want to mention is over the weekend, um, the job used um, to to provide permission to publish new publics um, was broken. And that job is running on trusted.ci, which means that people who try to use the new workflow to automatically release uh, plugins um, was broken. So considering that we only have five plugins using that workflow, that was not a major issue, uh, but still uh, for those people who try to release a new plugin. I think one of the, one of the main, I mean, when I haven't really looked at what was the root cause, um, so maybe carrots um, can help on this, but at least what it reminds us is trusted.ci is a very protected Jenkins instance with only few people where only few people have access to it, um, which means that when we have an issue on that on that instance, it takes us a long time to discover the issue. So one way to detect problem there would be to configure a notification like sending emails when a job is failing or um, notify an RC. So we definitely have to investigate some options to be notified about failing jobs on that instance. So just to remind people, um, trusted.ci is a uh, Jenkins instance running in a private location where we run really few jobs, but those are quite important. So typically we build Jenkins Docker images, we generate Jenkins.io website. Um, we have a jobs name, a release permission updater, which um, manage permission, which allow basically the which handle the permission and grant, for instance, plugin maintainer to publish artifacts on our artifactory service. Um, and so typically that was the job that was failing over the weekends. Um, so everything has been resolved um, for some reason that I still have to investigate. Um, Damien had to restart that, that instance and lost the public IP of that machine. Um, the public IP is used to establish connection uh, with our LDAP service. So our LDAP service whitelists some IPs. And so because trusted.ci IP changed, um, we weren't able to use it to work authenticate um, on LDAP. So yeah, so the outage on that uh, specific machine had some um, downstream issues, but everything is back to normal. The, the, the thing is, the good point is, it gives us an opportunity to, to, expert, to test the status um, service, so status.jenkins.io. Um, so Daniel opened a PR um, on Jenkins Infra slash status to report the issue. Um, what we identify is only one person had the ability to merge PR there. I mean, really few people because I was not the only one, but really few people had the opportunity to merge PR. So now I fix that by allowing um, more teams. So typically people from the core team or and people who are on call right now. Um, so more people in the future will be able to merge um, PR there. Otherwise the process to, to report the issue was I mean, pretty easy to use, pretty easy to review. Um, we identify another small issue, which is we don't mention the time zone in the ticket. So I have to update the documentation to include our time zone in the date because it was not really obvious um, for how long the issue was done, was reported. Um, I think it was uh, for several hours, like almost three hours that it take, uh, that it took to, to resolve that. Um, so. Olivier, on the time zone topic, is it okay if we express it in whatever time zone we're in? Could would I be allowed to say Mountain Time for my U.S. Yes. or is it best that I always express it in UTC? No, I think um, I think the, the tool can can handle the time zone. I saw PR regarding that. I have to double check if it's already included in the version of the tool that we are using on it. Um, but I think so. The, the fallback situation will be to use ETC if we cannot um, have dynamic time zones. But otherwise, yeah, I try to configure it to to for your. Um, and the thing is, maybe it's already the case, but I have to double check. Um, any question regarding this outage? 
So while we are talking about um, issues on trusted CI, I just put another issue um, right before the meeting, which is the plugin site is not updated anymore. Um, so the job that generate plugin site data is failing since midnight, I mean, since, uh, sorry, since 16 hours. Um, it will be easier for everybody. So since, since 16 hours, the job is failing, um, the error is pretty obvious. It says that we are trying to fetch data that does not exist on the API. So there is a GraphQL error. Um, so I have to double check with Kevin to see what's wrong there. Um, what surprised me is in the past, we had a monitoring check that detects all hold where the data from the, from the plugin site. And this time the, the check did not uh, trigger. Uh, so I have to double check with Kevin if the API uh, that we are monitoring change, um, which is yeah, which is possible because we switched from Elasticsearch to Alcolia, I think. Uh, well, and that monitoring check that we're using seems aligned with what Gareth had lobbied earlier that we should be user-centered if the plugin site's not updating, that's sort of a user perception where we say, okay, yeah, the users won't see things that arrive. So, so that makes that, to me at least, a, a very valuable um, check. Gareth, help me on that. Is that the kind of thing that you were, you were thinking of or is that still not user user facing enough? Yeah, I think that's, I think that would make sense. Um, yeah, rather than, I mean, the, the, the lack of a the lack of a plugin being able to download is a problematic thing, isn't it? That's something that somebody would experience. Um, um, I mean, just going back to the, just going back to the, the altitude of the weekend, the kind of thing that you'd, whilst we could monitor the failure of the job, what we're actually interested in is not necessarily the failure of the job. But the failure of being able to release, so it's it's there. It's like, and I'm not sure how we would find this out, but it's that particular GitHub action that is triggering the release that is failing because it can't upload the artifact. Um, that's what the user would experience as the problem, because um, the job could fail, but the credentials could be valid for, I don't know, six hours. I'm not sure how often they're rotated, but six hours, twelve hours. Um, so there would be no impact until the point at which they expire. So an, an option would just be to monitor uh, for how long the job has been failing. Yeah. So see, see, see no jobs, see, since if no job succeeds within an hour, then um, the issues, uh, the severity of the issue increase. But yeah, yeah, we should not be triggered if only one job failed because yeah, maybe for some reason. Yeah, so I don't think okay. Um, the thing is, right now we don't we don't have any notification configure on our Jenkins instance. Like we don't send email, we don't notify RC. Um, I tried to use the Datadog plugin uh, in the past, um, but that was not really successful. So we remove it for now. But uh, yeah. I, th I think uh, I'll end up configuring the RC notification. The reason why I like RC, if if we can manage the notification to a pretty small amount of notification, um, it's useful to have those information from RC because we all have always have one person available who could look at that. Um, we've been using RC notification for the Puppet Master for a while, and that I mean this has been really useful. But we usually don't get. I mean, that's because we don't have a lot of notification. Like we have maybe one error per month, so two, two error per month. So I just, we just have to, to double check that we don't spam the channel. Um, and would those notifications go to Jenkins dash infra or, or what? What for, for, for the puppets for puppets uh, change it goes to, to Jenkins in front. Yeah. Sometimes okay, we so see that, you sometimes we see something like um, puppet puppet failed on that machine, and so that pretty obvious that um, for some reason puppet apply did not work on that machine. Most of the time it's just um, um, disks full, or like something like you try to install a package that does not exist. I mean there are different reasons why the puppet would fail, um, but yeah. 
usually because because it does not happen because it does not regularly happen um we usually fix the issue like in 15 minutes we, we saw the notification look at it fix it and that's it and that's all done so we should definitely but another thing uh we should uh, start migrating some of the job running on trusted.ci on infra.ci uh, some could easily be moved um the, the, those for instance that i have in mind are um the job that generate javadoc the job that generates um jenkins.io website um those could be easily moved uh, to infrared ci it also means that we've got a proper backup of the jobs as well because it's all in git Ah, oh, okay. So um, infra, infra.ci is already managed as infra.ci is already managed as code. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, it's so, it's just that it's just that the image at the moment isn't um and it it, it downloads the plugins each time. But after the chat with Olivia this morning, that will soon be rectified. So yeah, that, that was a minor permission issue that I had to fix this morning. Um, so as Garrett mentioned, um, he has been working on a process to automatically um, build Docker, Jenkins Docker image for the Jenkins Infra project. So the idea is each time we release a new version, a new weekly version or a new stable version, um, we fetch that information, build a new image, but also each time a new version is available for a plugin, we update the Docker image containing that new plugin version. Um, so the idea is to, to directly ship that Docker image with everything packaged. Um, in terms of stability, the thing is right now we just have in the current in the current situation. So without the work that has been done by Garrett, in the current configuration, we use Gcast to to install everything, and we use a ham chart. And one of the configuration in the ham chart, we list the list of plugins that we need. And each time the Docker image starts, it try to reinstall uh, every plugin. So um, typically, what happened is. If for some reason, and it already happened in the past, for some reason we have to restart the Jenkins instance, because because whatever the reason, we restart the, the, that instance, um, and then we cannot install plugins because there is an issue with a third mirrors, and so it does not make sense because then the the, the Jenkins would I mean it, it would take us like fifteen minutes to start it, the, the the service even if. We didn't change the plugin, um, but just because by default we remove the plugins from the installation from the from the disk and we try to reinstall them, um, yeah, just it's it slow down the the start the starting time. Um, so that's that's what we want to change. Um, and so yeah, basically what we were missing is um, git tags are at least a way to clearly identify which which Docker image contain which version of Jenkins and which plugin. So we can roll back in case of issues. Um, so this is something that should be solved pretty quickly. Um, uh, bum, bum, bum. And I think that's mainly that. Um, there is no major changes um, that is coming. There is a discussion that I would like that I would like to start. Um, so I can I can show that here. So the idea is I'm looking for ways to manage permission of contributors of people who contribute to the Jenkins for organization and who don't contribute anymore. So the idea is to remove those, remove, remove the right permission. So to be sure that if they don't contribute, they cannot merge a PR. Um, but at the same time, um, I would like to keep them in the Jenkins for organization so they can still provide um, we can still notify them if we expect some PR reviews or whatever. So I've been thinking to create a group that I would name alumni. And so by default, every people, every person who don't contribute anymore to the project, I would just put them in that uh, specific group. Um, so we would, I mean, yeah, we would be able to, we would still be able to notify them if we need some uh, reviews. Um, and their PR would still be considered, but at the same time, we would need someone more active to merge the PR. Um, to people that I have in mind, that's, uh, the people that I have in mind are people like Tyler Kazuki, um, Mark Jackson, who officially stepped down, 
And so we have a lot of people in the Jenkins C4 organization who haven't, who haven't contributed to the project for a really long time. And so, yeah. I don't know if you have opinion on this. Yeah, so the concept of an alumni group sounds really good. And so you say it would allow them to read, but not merge so they can still see what's happening and give their insights. Yeah, so the idea is to give them read permission to public repositories, uh, not private repositories. Um, that's one thing. Um, I may be a bit concerned about the notification because if they are in read-only on every Git repository, by default, they will receive notification each time someone opens a PR or whatever. Um, but yeah, then, then that it will be the responsibility of the person to opt out. Um, well, why they would they get notifications? And why do they need read access on a public repo? Is it just good? That's it's a public repo. So that's a public repo, but having them in a team would allow us to, to ask them to, to, to notify. Um, so you could just uh, put their name and they will receive a notification specifically. But you, but you wouldn't use the team though. No, you would not need to use the team. But for instance, if you want so if you if you want to, uh, when you open, for instance, a PR and you want to assign that PR to someone or ask a reviewer, that person needs to be in the organization. So they need to be in a team some way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they need read access for you to make them a reviewer. Unless they've contributed to the repo before, I think. Um or change that file recently or something, but they shouldn't get any notifications by by just having read access. They have to. Okay. Okay, so that's that's my only, I mean, fear. But yeah, if 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 they don't get notification, then that's perfect. The thing is, we have quite a lot of people uh, that would be in that scenario. So, um, and so they would still have the the small Jenkins Infra logo under their, their profile profile as well. But yeah, that's that's it. But yeah, I have to send I'll send a notification on Jenkins for family list later today. Otherwise, yeah. Any other thing you want to bring here? Otherwise, I propose to finish the meeting earlier. So one yes. time, two time. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Mark. Oh, go ahead, Tim. I was just going to ask, has anyone done the work for the um, says by plugins affected for when trusted CI data? Has, so has someone synced the plugins that were down for when trusted CI was down over the weekend? Has someone done the sync? So, what are you talking about trusted CI in the release update permission? Um, so when Trusted CI was down, um, whatever plugins were released from I think Friday to Monday um, won't have been published to the updates um, um, or to get.jenkins.io. Okay. Yeah, um, no, I haven't, I haven't worked at that yet. Yeah, the update center by default only syncs um, the last three hours of releases and it relies on the fact that it runs every three minutes. Um, there's flags that you can run to the update center to increase that number, or you can sync everything, but syncing everything takes hours. Um, but if you could just, if you add a filter for like five days, it wouldn't be very much. Um, okay, so, so Tim, I'm not sure I'm, I'm getting it there. So the, the update center sync is hosted on Trusted CI and was down for the weekend? No, what so the updates so basically so plugin maintainers have released plugins the update center is built every three minutes um the update center output a file a json file with recent releases of the last three hours of releases based on it just as it as it runs it builds that file um and then it outputs that file and then it runs a script on um package stop or package yeah. stop so so basically that script could be manually run right yeah yeah it can be ran manually run um but it's easiest to just get update center to build build the list for you or you can manually check artifactory if you want but it's not the easiest 
because on, uh, for, for me, I have the feeling that it will be easier to just run the script manually on the machine. Uh, and so we don't, we don't change the job of the update center. It's up to you. It's just a flag um, that you pass to it on how many hours you want it to run, how many hours you want it to output. Is it, is it, also, is it also the script um, that uploads artifacts to get the Jenkins that I you? Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, I see which script I'm thinking of. So and so we have to be sure that it take into account plugins since Friday. Um, okay. I'll look at it. I think it would be easier to just just keep um, yeah the run, run manually run the script. I'll sync with Daniel as well. Yeah, Daniel fixed it on I think Thursday. There was an outage last week as well. When um, I think the certificate um, got yeah. under 30 days. And so basically the same thing happened last week and Daniel did it last time, but then Trusted went down again on Friday and it needs doing again. So that that's a good point that you remind, um, that, you remind that I forgot to mention. So, so the, um, the update center when when the update so when the job that update the update center run it tests that the certificate of the update center is valid um, and is older I mean is valid for at least one month and we have we have to to rotate the update center certificates um, and we are planning to do that next week so the 29th of March but but because um, the current update but because the current certificate is expiring in less than one month the job was failing so Daniel just temporarily removed that condition about failing if, if the certificate is um, expiring within, he, he normally within just months. changes the, he normally changes it from 30 days to 14 days or something. I might want to check how long you set it till because it might trigger again. Um, I, I I told him that uh, I I I wrote the certificate the certificate next Monday, so um, should be okay. Yeah. But. yeah, it should be okay. Check quickly. I mean, the the certificate is pretty easy to rotate. I just generate that and upload um, and update the configuration on Trust.ci. So I did that multiple times, and each time it like takes me 15 minutes, something like that. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll work on that next Monday. Um, so to do, okay, right. Thanks, thanks, team, for that reminder. Any other last minute topic? So weekly Mark. release, I haven't checked to see if weekly release has completed yet. It was, I restarted it and it's running or it was running hours ago. It's now published at least a part. Okay. So I'll run the, the weekly checklist later today uh, to be sure that the Docker image is available, et cetera. We had, yeah, we, we had a small glitch later, uh, earlier today uh, with a timeout issue. Um, which was a timer issue in the Jenkins agent. Um, so we had to re-trigger the build, but yeah, everything went fine second time. The good thing is we don't often have issues with the release environment. So yeah, it's not like that's a common issue, but yeah, still we have to keep that. Um, we, have, we have to keep an eye on that. Well, thanks everybody for, for your time. Yep. I was just gonna say, I don't, I don't know when it expires, but he set it to expire when there's 14 days left. The job will stop failing. Okay, and so it will expire. Olivier, the the if I recall correctly, the certificate expires April eleven. So we've got so that's that's right on the cusp of that fourteen days. Yeah, so we have to increase the the dates, or we rotate earlier. That's another option. We we rotate the certificates uh, like this week. Yeah, it's going to expire the day before, um, looking at my calendar, unless something gets changed. So, I mean, the job's going to, job's going to fail the day before. Just, which which uh, is cheap to ask Daniel, or we could submit the pull request, give it 12 days instead of 14, right? So then, then we don't have to change. We don't have to have you working on a weekend, Olivier, to do that certificate yeah. rotation. I'd rather stay with 29th as the rotation day, if it's okay with you. Otherwise, otherwise we can do the, the certificate rotation on Friday. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm more prone to Monday. Just personally, we announced it for Monday. I just assume okay. Monday. <laughs> okay, then then ask Daniel to 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 change the date. I just posted it. Okay, last thanks. Link. Uh, so. Okay, thanks everybody for your time. Um, and see you on RC. Have a great have a great day. Bye bye.